For those of you that have followed my channel for a while, you know that I have a framework laptop and I absolutely love the framework laptop, mostly because of the mission of the company to make an affordable and also highly upgradable and repairable laptop. So basically, this thing should be the last laptop I need for a very long time. But there's a problem. And the problem is the motherboard died. And we're sort of in this weird spot where I didn't want to order a new motherboard because I had already pre-ordered the AMD Ryzen motherboard, which is supposed to ship quarter three of 2023. You'll notice it is quarter three of 2023. So this motherboard replacement that I've already pre-ordered could ship almost any time now. Uh, so I don't want to spend more money getting a motherboard that will be in this laptop for just a month or two. So uh, I decided I didn't want to go that route for the moment. Instead, I decided to get a keyboard case for my iPad and use that as sort of a stopgap laptop solution. No dice. I actually couldn't stand using it as a laptop replacement. It just wasn't good enough. So I went to Amazon and typed in laptop and sorted by just least expensive, keyed in a couple of specs that I sort of looked at as the bare minimum, and then I was looking through Amazon listings and I found this thing. This is a Dell XPS. Specifically, this is the XPS 15 9575 2-in-1. And it's a pretty generic Dell XPS laptop. It, it's good build quality. It's got decent speakers. The specs are nothing special. It came with just eight gigabytes of RAM and also just a 256 gigabyte SSD, which I actually upgraded to a one terabyte NVMe drive I had laying around. I'll probably swap it back when I'm done with this laptop and ready to actually sell it. But the big draw aside from having a laptop again was the CPU. This thing comes with the Intel i5-8305G. Those of you that don't remember, and I'll forgive you if you don't, remember that weird CPU collaboration that AMD and Intel did where it's an Intel CPU but with AMD graphics? That was this guy. So I wanted to take a little bit of a look at just a few games on this because aside from being good enough for just my day-to-day -day usage, because let's be real, most of the stuff I'm doing is internet-based, Google Docs, YouTube, commenting, watching videos, that sort of thing. All that can be handled very easily by a very run-of-the-mill and cheap laptop. By the way, this thing was about $300 when I snagged it on Amazon Renewed. But I wanted to see if you could do some light gaming still in 2023 with this thing that debuted all the way back in 2018. So as I loaded up CSGO, 1080p, high settings, a couple of things to notice. And I didn't replace thermal paste on this at all. So some of these temperatures are A, really high, running nearly 100 degrees Celsius. In fact, I believe at some point it does hit 100 degrees Celsius. So obviously the temperatures are really, really high, but from a frame rate perspective and playability perspective, yeah, this thing actually handles CSGO no problem. And in fact, the display is quite a good display, at least on the 1080p version, which is the version of this laptop that I have. So yeah, I'm actually really happy with the CSGO performance. This is definitely a game you could play on this laptop without having any problems and you could absolutely be very competitive. So similarly, Skyrim also ran really, really well on this device, though oddly was capped at 30 FPS on high settings. And I didn't really care too much to investigate exactly why. The reality here is though 30 FPS Skyrim and it was pretty much a rock solid 30 FPS is more than playable and of course if you open up it to 60 FPS you're going to have even better performance there but the truth is that this device is more geared towards if you're a gamer looking at one of these it's more geared towards the idea of retro gaming you're gaming on older titles, not so much newer AAA titles. And for that matter, I did run into an issue or two as I was doing testing. For instance, Doom Eternal would not load up whatsoever, which was a bit of a bummer because Doom Eternal is sort of known as a title that runs really, really well on a huge variety of hardware, but I couldn't get the game to even launch on this device. So driver support is definitely not spectacular when it comes to the graphics for this device, and you 
won't be able to run modern AAA titles, at least not at very high frame rates. But if you're happy playing sort of your older gaming library and you're looking for a cheap laptop, these things were going all day long on eBay for under $300. And it'll get you a nice day-to-day -day laptop, but also give you something that you can play games on at least a little bit in your spare time as well. So this is a really fun device and was a really interesting CPU GPU collaboration between Intel and AMD all the way back in 2018. Frankly, we're not going to see anything like that for a really, really long time, at least if ever again, because obviously Intel is now more in the graphics scene than it was back in 2018. And AMD is as competitive as ever on the CPU side, so they don't really need to leverage uh, somebody else's processing cores in mobile devices anymore because uh, Ryzen Mobile is a really strong CPU platform in its own right. So if you happen to have one of these devices that has one of these CPUs from Intel, Intel and AMD. Let us know in those comments down below what you think of it now, what you thought of it when you first got it. Are you still gaming on this device or is it strictly just for day-to-day -day use? Otherwise, go ahead and hit that like, share, subscribe button. All those things help out the channel so much. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna let YouTube queue up a few more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you all in the next video.